In this episode I introduce you to blend spaces and the animation blueprint. By the end of the episode you can expect to have a character with all his animations tied and transitioning together through an animation blueprint. Welcome guys to another episode. In this episode we're doing blend spaces, animation blueprints. It's going to be pretty cool. You can get your characters moving around. Pretty awesome. For those of you who don't know, an animation blueprint is used to control the animations for your character. Every time you make a character, they will have an animation blueprint, but just because it makes animating and transitioning between those animations so much easier. And a uh, blend space, I'll explain what a blend space is in a second. But before we start this episode, you will need your character to have these animations. If you don't have those, go watch my animating video and quickly whip them up. You will also need to import them into your program. So if you don't know how to do that, watch my importing video. But if you've got all that, let's get started on this. So what we're basically going to be doing this episode is copying the mannequin blend space and the mannequin animation blueprint. Sounds a bit dull, I know, but it's the best way I can explain how things work to you guys. And then once you know that, then you can start improving it for your own characters and you can make some awesome things. So yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is make a blend space. So we're going to right click under animation, select blend space 1D. And you'll notice there's 1D and just a normal blend space. Don't worry about these too much, just know that the 1D one is one dimensional and the other one is three dimensional in terms of transitioning to animations. So select blend space 1D, then select your skeletal mesh and a blend space will be made for your skeletal mesh. We're gonna double click to open it up. So what is a blend space? A blend space, just like it says in the name, is a space where we can blend animations by using variables. So blend spaces work by pulling in animations into what you could call a graph. When the graph has a low value, it will play one animation. When the graph has a high value, it will play another animation. And when it's when the value is in the middle, it will mix both animations. So in the middle here, we have our quote unquote graph. On the right, we have our animations linked to our skeletal mesh that can be pulled into our graph. And then at the bottom, we have a variable which, when changed, will change which animation is being played. Then on the left side here, we just have the settings of the blend space and we can change the variable here. So we're going to use this blend space to transition between our idle animation, walk animation, if we have one, and our running animation. As those are to do with movement, we're going to set the variable which decides which animation we're doing uh, called speed. So we're going to rename the variable to speed, and then we're going to set the maximum value to 375. Or whatever your character's max speed is, put that in here. So now you'll notice we have our speed along the bottom at a max value of 375. Next, we're going to bring in our idle animation at a speed of zero. When our character is stood still, we want the idle animation to play. If you have a walking animation, bring it in around here and then put your running animation at the end. As I don't have a walk animation, I'm just gonna throw my running animation around here. Now, if you left click the green dot, you can see what your animation will look like at different speeds. Good job everyone, you just made your very first blend space. Now we need to create an animation blueprint for the rest of our animations and to tell the blend space what the value of speed is. Because at the moment it's just the variable which isn't being changed. So we're going to right click in our content browser, under animation, create an animation blueprint. Select your skeletal mesh again and then double click to open this up. So the animation blueprint consists of two parts, the anim graph and the event graph. So you've seen an event graph before, but let me explain what's going on with this one. In the top left, we have our preview of what animation is being run. Bottom left is our variables, functions, same as a normal blueprint, but if you accidentally close the anim graph or the event graph, if you double click them there, you can reopen them. Top right is our details section where we can tweak certain details. And in the bottom right, we can tweak certain variables and values to see how changing these variables affect which animation is being played. And in the middle, instead of our event tick, we have event update animation, which will consistently fire off events when an animation is being played. And the node below it is just getting our character. So whichever character you're making this animation blueprint for, that node is just retrieving the character value. So the first thing we're going to do is actually copy some nodes from the mannequin animation blueprint. So find your mannequin animation blueprint, open it up and copy everything from the event graph and paste it over to your character's event graph. You'll notice that we're actually missing two variables. So in the bottom left, create variable and make a boolean called is in air, then make a float called speed. Okay, so what are these blueprints actually doing? So we know the event blueprint update animation is just like an event tick. This will be constantly firing while an animation is playing. Is valid is just checking if something exists. So we're checking if our character exists and if the character does exist 
as we've got our character reference, we can get the movement from it and we can check if the character is falling through the air. And if the character is falling through the air, we can set is an air to true. Then we, the, with the variable we created called speed, with our character reference, we can get the velocity, to basically turn it in, turn that velocity into a float and then set the speed. So this is constantly updating the program, letting us know if the character is in the air and what speed the character is moving at. So now let's go on to the anim graph. And as I said before, the anim graph is used to control the character's animations and it does this in states. So a state is basically an animation or a group of animations with some functionality behind it. Depending what variables are what or depending what situation your character is in depends what animation is output is. So right click and click add new state machine. Double click to open this up. So what this entry node is doing is basically just like an event tick. It's constantly firing, looking for what animation it should be transferring over to the character. So we're gonna right click, bring in a new state, and we're gonna call this idle slash run blend space or something like that. And what we've just created is basically a node which can play an animation or play a blend space. So we're gonna double click to open this up and we're actually gonna put in our blend space. So right click, type in blend space and bring in your blend space, then hook it up. So you notice the variable we created in the blend space speed, which decides if we're idle, walking or running, now has an input. So now we can update this variable with the variable we made in the anim graph, also called speed. And you'll notice in the bottom right, if we change our variable speed in the top left, we can see our animation changing through the blend space animations. Okay, so we've got the movement sorted, now we need to implement a jump. So if you click on the arrow in the top left to go backwards, we can go back to our state machine and create some more states with some more animations in. Okay, now we're gonna bring in a, a jump state, so pull off our idle run state, and then add state. Call this jump start. Double click to open it up, and then in the bottom right in your asset browser, that will have a list of all your animations related to that skeletal mesh. Bring in your jump start. Then plug that in, then go back. Now we're gonna bring in a jump loop, so drag off that state and bring in a new state and call this jump loop. Double click to open it up, add the animation, go back, pull off this and then add a jump end. This is where we're landing. So then double click to open that up, add the jump end, then go back and then plug that back into our idle run state. By default, your animations will be set to looping, but we don't want the jump start or the jump end to be looping. So double click on your jump end, click on the animation, then uncheck looping in the details panel. Then go back, then double click on your jump end, click on the animation, then uncheck looping in your details panel. Okay, so now we've got four states. One with the blend space in, which controls our movement. We've got a jump start, which is the start of a jump, a jump loop, which is the middle of a jump, and a jump end, which is the jump landing. At the moment, the program has no way to know when we want to start the jumping animations. All he's gonna do is stay idle. So we need to make a transition rule, which will tell the program when we want to jump. So the way a transition rule works, it's basically just the bool, like an if statement. When it's true, the animation will transition from one animation to the other. So we want the character to start his jump animation when he's in the air. So if we bring in our in the air bool, when that's true, he will start jumping. So we've got a transition from the idle and running to the jump start. Now we need the transition from the jump start to the jump loop. So double click on the transition and we want to transition from the jump start to the jump loop when the jump start animation is pretty much over. So if you right click and type in time remaining, bring that node in and then pull off that. And then if you do less than 0.1 and plug that into the ball, this means when there's less than 0.1 seconds of the jump start animation remaining, it will begin transitioning into the jump loop animation. Now we need to do the transition from the jump loop to the jump end. So if you go back and then double click on the transition, we actually want the landing animation to play when we're no longer in the air. So if you bring in the is in air node, and then you, if you pull off that and type is not, and then plug that in, this animation will transition from the jump loop to the jump end when we have landed on the ground. And finally, we need to transition from our jump end back into our movement state with our blend space. And to do this, we're gonna do the same as how we did from the jump start to the jump loop. When the animation is over, we're gonna transition. So if you go on it and then bring off the time remaining, and then you do less than 0.1 again, and then plug that in. When the animation is less than 0.1 seconds left, it will transition back into our movement state. And that is everything for the anim graph. Now I'm just gonna quickly summarize everything that we've got. So. The entry node is looking for an animation to give to the character to play. 
we've plugged this into the idle slash run blend space state. This state will vary between idling and running depending on our speed. This speed is taken from our character's movement and is passed to the blend space through variables. When our character jumps, the is in air boolean will turn to true. This will transition us from our movement blend space to our jump start. When the time remaining on the jump start is less than 0.1 seconds, we will transition to the jump loop. This jump loop will keep looping until our character lands on the ground and the is an air boolean turns to false. This will then transition us into the jump end animation and when there is less than 0.1 seconds left of this animation, we will transition back into our movement blend space state. The very last thing to do is to open up your third person character blueprint, change the mesh to your character mesh, and then under animation, select your animation blueprint we just made. And so guys, that is it. I really, really hope this episode has helped you out a little bit, and I apologize that it was probably a bit more boring than the usual. Uh, we've got some exciting episodes coming up though, character selection, character attacking, bosses and stuff like that so that'll be fun but i've just got to get through these episodes for the people who need it so thank you guys for watching see you next time